set our thanks, oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but Sister Ty, will God bless you for leading those prayers. I mean, it's just, there's a stirring in my heart for us to just begin to bless the name of the Lord. Just acknowledge his presence. Perhaps if you never came to this understanding, I want to enlighten us tonight that Jesus is here. Hallelujah. Jesus is here. Jesus is here. I know he's here. I feel his presence. I have that inner witness within me that tonight destinies are changed. The Bible said that there is only one time when the angel will come to stir up the water. And it says, whoever steps in first receives their healing. My brothers and my sisters, blessed be God that Jesus is here, that everyone that enters would receive what they are trusting of the Lord tonight. And tonight is that God remembered me. And therefore, let's just begin to bless the name of the Lord for ordering our steps here. You see, the reason why I said that Jesus is here tonight is because it's simple. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 18, it says, wheresoever two or three shall be gathered in my name. It says, there I am in the midst of them. And perhaps you have heard that scripture over and over again. But although, technologically speaking, it says that 27 people are locked on here. But allow me to say that it's 28 people. 28, with the 28th person being the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. They are present in this place. And tonight, I, I, I feel, I know it like I know my name. It's an inner witness burning within me that tonight is different. Tonight is different. And for this reason, just begin to bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Acknowledge his hand upon your life. You see, again, the Bible says in the book of Psalm 65, it says, blessed is the man, blessed is the man whom the Lord causes to approach his holy throne. You see, kings only invite people to their presence, except you are not, except you are invited. If you enter, you could lose your life. Hallelujah. If you remember the story of Esther, the Bible said that Esther was not invited, but because God had ordained it that day that she would go to make a petition on behalf of God's people, the king raised off his staff, meaning that she was allowed to approach him. The Bible said that let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. Tonight, tonight is a change, is a night of change. Ah, if I be a man of God, you would have testimonies from tonight in the name of Jesus. Just bless the name of the Lord. It is not to my glory, but it's all for the glory of the name of Jesus. Therefore, Father, we just want to bless you. Glory be to your holy name. Lord, I yield myself to you tonight. I'm asking that, Father, you will speak through me. Holy Spirit, take charge. Do as you please tonight, but do not let us remain the same. Do not let us remain the same in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your holy name, O God. To you be all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Good evening, everybody. Um, thank God for bringing us to the last Friday in the month of November. And should Jesus tarry, you and I and everybody in your household will see the month of December in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Welcome to tonight's video. Our theme is, and God remembered me. And we're reading quickly from the book of Genesis chapter 8. Genesis chapter 8 from verses 1 to 5. Genesis chapter 8 from verses 1 to 5. Please, I beg you in the name of Jesus. Have that sense of discernment that tonight my word is coming. Let there be expectation in your heart. Let faith arise 
and you will see what the Lord will do. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 8 from verse 1. The Bible says here that then God remembered Noah. Hallelujah. God is remembering you. I want you to put your name in that scripture and say then God remembered Jeffrey. Hallelujah. God remembered Jeffrey. He did not just remember Jeffrey. The Bible said that and every living thing. Hallelujah. And all the animals that were with him in the ark. In other words, God is not just remembering you, but as a proof that he has remembered you, he's remembering everybody in your household. Hallelujah. He's remembering everybody in your household. It says that, and then God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the animals that were with him in the ark. And the Bible said that, and God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters subsided. Hallelujah. Every raging storm, every raging challenge, every long-standing issue tonight marks its end in the name of Jesus. Every long-standing challenge, anything that have lingered for so long, tonight marks its end in the name of Jesus. The Bible said that the fountains of the deep and the windows of the heavens were also stopped. It says, and the rain from heaven was restrained. And the Bible went ahead to say that, and the waters receded continually from the earth. Hallelujah. In other words, today, one challenge would end. Tomorrow, another challenge is ending. It will be a perpetual cessation of challenges in your life in the name of Jesus. And it says, and at the end of the 150 days, the waters decreased. Hallelujah. Leko vina barase kolia basaya. Exodus chapter 14, verse 14. This word is for somebody here. God is saying to you that the Egyptians you see today, you shall see them no more. Hallelujah. The Egyptians you see today, you shall see them no more in the name of Jesus. It says, then the ark rested in the seventh month and the 17th day of the month of the month and on the mountains of Ararat. And the verse five, it says, and the waters decreed, de decreased continually until the 10th month. And in the 10th month, on the first day of the month, tops of the mountains were seen. Hallelujah. In other words, I give you that prophecy that come December 1st, everything that was hidden in your life, hallelujah, begins to receive visibility in the name of Jesus. What do I mean by this? The Bible says that what, and on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains were seen. In other words, every gifting, perhaps you have been applying for jobs and it seemed like none was working. I decree visibility over you in the name of Jesus. Perhaps you have been trusting the Lord for his spouse. And indeed, it seems like nothing is coming your way. That in the name of Jesus, that you begin to receive visibility in the name of Jesus. That visibility is called favor. And the Bible said that the Lord surrounds the righteous with favors with a shield. I declare and judge you favored in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. The title of my sermon as the theme for tonight is, is that and God remembered me. And tonight, in the name of Jesus, I declare it again that God is remembering you and your household in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, if we're going to discuss the subject of remembrance, the reality of it is that we must, first of all, establish the nature of God. Hallelujah. We must first of all establish the nature of God. And why is this important? It's important because until you are able to settle the nature of God, hallelujah, until, the, until you are able to settle in your heart the nature of God, you are subject to deception. What do I mean by this? The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 3, that when the devil came to tempt Adam and Eve, he made a statement and said, did God really say, hallelujah. In other words, if Adam and Eve had an understanding of who God is, hallelujah, knowing that what God says he means and what he means he says, then they would not have opened themselves up to deception. In other words, I'm saying this because if you don't know who God is or you don't come to grip 
with the true nature of God, you are subject to the fact that the enemy would begin to make certain suggestions towards you. And all of a sudden, you begin to accept it and believe that it's your reality. However, it is not the nature of God. Hallelujah. So in order to establish the nature of God, we first of all begin to look at the pertinent natures of God. Number one is that God is a promise keeper. I love Numbers 23 verse 19. He says that God is not a man. Hallelujah. You know, first and foremost, this, this, this if we begin to excavate the depth of the meaning of that statement, God is not a man. Let me give an attempt to it. Men, are the ones who make promise and they fail. Hallelujah. The Bible says that woe to them who trust in horses and chariots. It says that, but our trust shall be in the name of the Lord. In other words, only men will make a promise. And when it comes to the day of fulfillment, they would renege on that promise. They would look back and say, I did not say anything. Hallelujah. Number one. Number two, only men would do what would disappoint hallelujah only men would disappoint when you begin to listen to people's stories of how people have disappointed them you begin to realize that you know only god has the potential and the capability to say what he means and you know the bible said that because he could not swear by anyone greater the bible said that what he swore by himself Hallelujah. When he encountered Abraham, he said, because he could not swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, in blessing, I, God, will bless you. In other words, you, know, you, see, you see, there is nobody as credible as God. And so God looked around the earth as to say, you know what, by whose name can I swear? to the point where Abraham will have no choice but to believe me. But the Bible said that God could not find anybody. I said, you know what? I put myself to the test. I put my integrity on the line. I put my name on the line. That's why you see the Bible says that, you know what? That test me in this and see if I will not open the windows of heaven because there is no body that is like God. God is not a man. Men tell lies. Praise the name of the Lord. Men what tell lies, even the best of us, men, even the best of us as individuals, we have our own flaws. And so you do that, man tells lies, man is weak. Praise the name of the Lord. Man is weak. It's only men that will make promise and will say, oh, I will stand by you in the day of adversity. Say all manner of promises. But the truth is that when the day of judgment comes, look, look at Peter. Jesus was telling Peter, do you love me? Peter was saying, but master, I know that I love you. I will do anything for you. All of those things was just human zeal. So when people begin to say things beyond what they mean. They are, they are only saying it because they are only human. And so when you understand human nature, you are not disappointed. And the Bible says that God is not a man. In other words, anything anybody has done to you, accept it that they are flawed. But we're looking at the nature of God here. God is a promise keeper. Praise the name of the Lord. That it did not happen when you thought it would happen does not mean that God has lied. I'm saying that to somebody tonight, that it did not happen when you thought it would happen does not mean that God has lied. Praise the name of the Lord. God can be trusted. Praise the name of the Lord. God can be trusted. God can be trusted. So God, number one, to settle it in your heart, God is a keeper of promises. Praise the name of the Lord. Never has it been mentioned in scripture? You see, the Bible says that Jesus said that you search the scriptures thinking in itself that you would find me, but so that the one that you are looking for, I am here. In other words, the essence of scripture is to reveal to us who God is so that we can relate with him in that wise. Praise God. And so number one, God is not what a man. He's a promise keeper. Number two is that God is what? Just. Praise the name of the Lord. God is what? Just. When you understand the justice of God, you understand that he knows how to judge situations fairly. Praise God. He knows the 
right and appropriate judgment to dish out at any point in time such that it's not too harsh, it's not too, it's not too soft. He gives the adequate judgment at any point in time. He said, just God. Psalms 89 verse 14 says, righteousness and justice are the foundations of your throne. Praise the name of the Lord. In other words, you cannot say that you came to the courts of God and you received a false judgment. Hallelujah. You cannot say that you came to the courts of our God and you, and you received an unfavorable judgment. It's not possible. He's a righteous judge. The Bible says, Psalm chapter 18, sorry, Luke chapter 18, that it was given the instance of somebody came, a woman came and said, you know, avenge my adversaries. And it says, how much would God answer speedily? God is a just God. There is no partiality in him. What he will do for one, he will do for anybody. I'm saying this because maybe you begin to think, oh, that God is, show, is being partial with A. Why is he not doing it for me? God is a just God. I'm saying this because you must come to the point where when you understand the nature of God, then when you begin to encounter challenges, first and foremost, you are able to settle it with conviction that God is not the issue. Praise the name mm -hmm. of the Lord. God is not the issue. Number three is that God is omniscient. This is very key because when you understand this, then you would settle it in your heart again that God is not oblivious to what you are going through. Praise the name of the Lord. I like how the Bible says it here in the NIV version. First John 3, verse 20. It says, even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings and he does what? He knows everything. I like the story. I think it was in the book of Genesis chapter 28. If my memory serves me right of the story of Haggai and Ishmael. You see, people give God names based on their encounter. Praise the name of the Lord. People give God names based on his nature that he has revealed to them. I will explain what I'm trying to say. Somebody was sick and God healed them and he called him Jehovah Rapha. In other words, it is in that place of healing that I understood that God has the capability and the capacity to heal. Praise the name of the Lord. Abraham was in need and he encountered God as the Jehovah Jireh. Then he understood that in God is the capacity to provide anything needed at any point in time. Praise the name of the Lord. That was a nature of God that God revealed to, uh, to Abraham. So what I'm trying to bring to your knowledge tonight is that God is a God that sees. So in that story of Haggai and Ishmael, the Bible said that Ishmael cried unto God and God told Haggai, the mother, saying, I have heard the cry of the lad. And he said, turn now, hearing is a well of water. Praise the name of the Lord. And by that encounter, she said, truly, this is what Jehovah El Roy in other words, he is the God who sees. I'm saying this to somebody here tonight. Perhaps you have gone through a challenge for so long and you're wondering if there is really a God, does he really see what I'm going through? I want to tell you that God is seeing. And tonight he has remembered you. Praise the name of the Lord. Tonight he has seen you and what? He has remembered you. Talking about the nature of God, it was as a result of how God helped the children of Israel that Samuel raised a stone and called it Jehovah Ebenezer, the Lord my help. Praise the name of the Lord. So in all these things, all I'm trying to make you understand is that the nature of God is crucial if we are going to discuss how he remembers. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So you look at the Bible here now, you look, we begin to look at instances where it said that God remembered. Praise God. Genesis chapter 30, verse 22, where Sister Tyler was praying, you know, this scripture was mentioned. It says, and God remembered Rachel 
And by the reason of that remembrance, he did something. The Bible said that what? He opened up her womb. Exodus, 20, Exodus 2 verse 24, as a result of the hardship and the groanings of the children of Israel, the Bible said that, and God heard the will of the people of Israel who were slaves in Egypt. And by reason of hearing their groaning, he remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. Genesis chapter 8 verse 1 that we just read not long ago, the Bible says, and God remembered, praise the name of the Lord, and God remembered what? Noah. And God remembered Noah. Praise God. And God remembered Noah. And God remembered Noah. And so you begin to understand that all these things validate the ability of God to remember. Praise the name of the Lord. It validates God's ability to remember. Now look at First Samuel chapter 1, verse 19. It says, then they rose early in the morning and worshipped the Lord and came to their house at Ramah. And the Bible said that what? Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. We know the result of that remembrance because that remembrance was what gave birth to Samuel. I prophesy to everybody that is here today that as a reason of God remembering you, hallelujah, as a reason of God remembering you tonight, everything you are trusting the Lord for, he will deliver and do much more in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, having established the nature of God, the question that anybody that is thinking would ask themselves is, if God is all-knowing, how can he forget? Praise the name of the Lord. Does God really then forget? But remember when I made that statement, only men forget. Praise God. God does not what? Forget. Because the Bible says that what? He knows everything. Praise God. He knows everything. The Bible says that he's alpha. As he's alpha, he's what? Also the same, omega. He is the beginning and at the same time, the ending. In other words, he sees all things. There is nothing outside the scope of his vision. There is nothing outside the periphery of God's sight. That's why the Bible says that in the book of Psalm 121, it says that he that keepeth Israel, neither sleeps nor slumber. There is nothing that sleeps to the cracks. Praise God. All those shortcomings are peculiar to men. And the Bible settles it with us that God is not a man. So therefore, any time, you see many a times, we judge God from the lenses of how we judge men. And so for that reason, many of us will say, oh, I'm angry at God because God did not do this. But tonight I'm saying it again. God is not what a man. Praise God. God is not what a man. Because that statement is what is crucial to establish who God is and what he's capable of doing in our lives. Praise God. That statement, again, I say it, is what establishes who God is and what he's capable of doing in our lives. Praise the name of the Lord. So we begin to look at God and forget it. Now look at what the Bible says. I love this scripture so much. Isaiah 49 from verse 14 to 16. The Bible says that as Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. Perhaps this is you. And God responded to that lamentation saying, can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child that she has born? It says, even if she may forget, praise God, because she's a man, she's human. It says, even if she is able to forget, the Bible said that I, God, I, Jehovah, I will not forget you. It says, as a proof to show you that I will not forget you. It says, see, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. It says, your walls are ever before me. Praise the name of the Lord. His name is written on your hands. 
you know, if you were to open, now that's to tell you the majesty of God. That's to, that's to begin to comprehend the majesty of God. I think I shared this in church some time ago. One day I was walking down the Swansea Bay and I just began to ponder on scriptures. And the Bible says that he sits in the heavens and he makes the earth his footstool. And I looked at how vast the ocean was. I looked at how vast the sea was. And I said, wow, only no man, no mind can comprehend the shoe size of God. Because he sits in the heavens and he makes the earth his footstool. Could you imagine the size of God? And now the Bible says, see, I have engraved you in the palms of my hands. Mind you, statistics tell us that there are about 8 billion people on this earth. Now, the truth is that if there was a better way to calculate those statistics, I think it's more than 8 billion. Because Africa, for example, we lack data. Praise God. So there is a chance that there are many people than what statistics are saying. Now, 8 billion people are written in the hands of God. Praise God. Because for everyone he created, the Bible said that what? He says, see, I have engraved you in the palms of my hands. Engraving simply means that when you learn, if you write something, you can clean it. Engraving is a deeper degree of writing. Why? Because engraving seems that you have no intention of ever deleting it. That's why on metal, you engrave on metal because you have no mind of ever deleting it. And the Bible says, see, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Or perhaps, you know, let me not say that. Or perhaps God has, you are ever and always before him. Praise God. Hallelujah. So you understand that when God remembers, then he's referring to, it's not that God has forgotten, but that he's talking about the element of timing. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 102 verse 13, it says, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion because the set time to favor her has come. It says what? Yea, that time is now. Praise the name of the Lord. And so when the Bible talks about God remembered, it's not that God forgot. It's simply that that is their day of visitation. So when the team, as inspired by the Holy Spirit, says, and God remembered me, it's just simply saying that of all the 365 days for this year, 2022, Tonight, being the 25th of November, 2022, is the night that God is desiring to take action on your behalf. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It says that what? When we are talking about remembrance, it's not that we're not talking about God's memory being blank, that he, he didn't remember his promise. No, it's only saying, talking about timing of action. Praise God. Because the Bible said that what? It is that time that God acts in the favor of his people. And guess what? Until we are remembered. This is what I want to establish. Until we are remembered, our circumstances will remain unchanged. Praise the name of the Lord. Until, I say it again. Until we are remembered, our circumstances remain the same. Look at what the Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 41. The Bible says that in the preceding verse chapters from verse 40, Genesis chapter 40, the Bible says that and Joseph was in prison. And Joseph's desire was that I just want to go back home. I'm tired of this place. And he told the butler, saying, when God delivers you out of this prison. Please remember me. Praise God. But the Bible says that what? God is not what? A man. Because the moment that butler left that prison, 
The Bible says that what? He forgot. Genesis 41 verse 9. The Bible said, and the butler exclaimed, saying, tonight I remember what my feelings. Praise God. Tonight, I remember what my feelings, that when I was in the prison, there was a Hebrew boy who told me my dream. And so that night was the night what Joseph was remembered. But prior to that night, there was no remembrance and therefore he remained in prison. But tonight, by the mercy of God, the prison doors are open. Hallelujah. By tonight, by reason of mercy, by reason of the compassion of God, the compassionate nature of the Father, prison doors are open in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So the question is, how then does God remember? How then does God remember? My brothers and my sisters, whether you like it or not, based on scriptural injunction, the Bible said that what? God has a book. Praise God. God was has a book. David says in the book of Psalm 56, verse 8, he says, you number my wanderings, put my tears into your bottle. And he asked a question, are they not in your book? Hallelujah. God was, has a book. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, let me not even get ahead of myself. If you remember the story of Esther, the Bible says that the book of Esther was very metaphorical. I say metaphorical because Esther, although it was a true narration of, it, of an event, but Esther represented Jesus in that scripture. Hallelujah. There was no part in the book of Esther that God was mentioned, but the king stood as a symbol of who God is. And so when Esther was interceding on behalf of the Jews, it was an equivalent of what Jesus is doing for us in the presence of the Father. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Bible says that the king could not sleep. Praise God. Genesis, sorry, Esther chapter 6 verse 1. The Bible said that, and the king could not sleep. And he said, Open up for me the book of records. Hallelujah. God what? Has a book. Number two is that what? God keeps records. I'm an accountant. One of the things that the accounting profession is known for is that we are responsible for keeping accurate records of the financial dealings of any establishment. And the reason is simple. It is based on the accuracy of records that you are able to make an informed decision. Praise the name of the Lord. And so if man is subject to faults and failings, a God that is perfect will do what? Keep a perfect record. There is nothing that God has no record of. This is why when this earth is all and gone and we get to behold the Father, the Bible said that what? you will give account of every idle word you have spoken. Praise God. Every idle word you have spoken, you will give account of it because a record is kept. Praise the name of the Lord. Revelation 20 verse 12 says, I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne. And it says, and the books were opened, including the book of life. Hallelujah. And the dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. Praise the name of the Lord. This should invoke fear on how we live our lives because a record is being kept. But thank God for the blood. For those of us who are in Christ Jesus, thank God for the blood. Because the Bible said that what? The blood has what blotted out every evil ordinances written against us. Thank God for the blood. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So how then does God re reward? Remember, remember that God's reward are based on what is recorded. Hallelujah. God's reward is based on what is recorded. The previous verse we read, 
Revelation 20, verse 12, it says, I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne, and the books were opened, including the book of life. And it says, and the dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. Look at what it says in the verse 15. It says, and anyone whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was what? Thrown into the lake of fire. Hallelujah. So truly, God keeps record. And Hebrews 11 verse 6 says that what? It is impossible to please God without faith. He says, anyone who wants to come to him must believe that he exists and he rewards those who sincerely seek him. So when God is rewarding, he's rewarding based on what? What was recorded. Remember, that book of Esther, as I mentioned earlier, is a symbolic book. And the Bible said, and the king said, what has been done or what reward has been given to the person who did such and such? And the Bible said nothing. And so the king said, ah, this error must be corrected. In other words, for any reward that has not been given, it's an error according to the design of God. That is why the Bible says that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Tonight, I'm teaching us how God remembers. Praise God. I'm teaching us how God remembers. Earlier on in the week, I was speaking to somebody and he was telling me, he said, when I was in the university, I lived in a one-bedroom flat. In that little one-bedroom flat, I opened up my flat so that people who had accommodation issues could share with me. He said, when I got married, I was living in a one bedroom with my wife. I still opened up that same one bedroom for somebody to come and share with me till they got their own place. When God blessed us with a three bedroom flat, I still shared my house with somebody. And today I have my own house. Praise the name of the Lord. And he made a statement and said, could it be that the reason why God has blessed me in such a short time is because what? Of those gestures that I have done in the past. All I'm trying to make you understand is that what? Every good and evil deed would not go without receiving a reward. Hallelujah. I say it again. That, that's why you must be mindful how you live your life as a believer. Every good and evil deed must receive what? A just reward. That's why I said, in the nature of God, God is what? Just. The Bible says, in righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. Psalm 89 verse 12. Hallelujah. In other words, he knows the right reward to dish out at any point in time. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. And so, how then do we provoke a remembrance? Look at what the Bible says. Esther chapter 6 from verses 1 to 6. For the sake of time, I will read quickly. It said that night, the king had trouble sleeping. So he ordered an attendant to bring the book of history of his reign so it could be read to him. And it says in those records, he discovered an account of how Mordecai had exposed the plots of Bixana and Teresh two of the eunuchs who guarded the door to the king's private quarters, they had plotted to assassinate King Xerxes. And what record or recognition did we give, ever give Mordecai for this? The king asked. His attendant replied, nothing has been done for him. Who is that in the outer court? The king inquired. As it happened, her man had arrived in the outer court of the palace to ask the king to impale Mordecai on the pole he had prepared. And so the attendants replied to the king, her man is out of the court. Bring him in, the king ordered. And the verse 6, look at the verse 6, said what? Her man came in and the king said, what shall I do to honor a man who truly pleases me? And her man thought to himself, who would the king wish to honor more than me? And he began to make certain confessions, not knowing that, Everything he was saying was the honor 
that was going to be accrued to Mordecai for the thing that he did for the king in the past. And so this is why I say that sometimes when things don't happen according to your timing and permutation, don't go and assume that God has forgotten. Praise God. God is a God of time and seasons. Praise God. Hallelujah. So how do we provoke remembrance? Even as we begin to round up to pray tonight. Number one, you provoke remembrance by what good deeds. Brethren, it is good to be good. Hallelujah. That people pay you back with evil. You are not doing it for them to pay you back. Your reward is God. God is the one who rewards. The Bible did not say a man is a rewarder of the digitally seeking. If our reward was in the hand of men, praise God. Now, let me explain this. If our reward was to be determined by a human being, I'm not sure we will receive a just reward. That is why the Bible says God is not a man. Because we see in the story of the King Xerxes, somebody did you good, but you forgot. Hallelujah. But the Bible says here, Galatians 6, verse 9 to 10, it says, then, so let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we do not give up. Therefore, whenever we have opportunity, it says what? We should do good to one another. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, one of the things that the devil uses as an attack, whenever you begin to feel discouraged towards being good to people, my brother and my sister, I'm not a prophet, but I can tell you for free, you are under attack. I say it again. Whenever you begin to feel discouraged about doing good towards people, you are under attack by the enemy. Why? Because he wants to rob you of your reward. This is why Paul was saying, let's not get tired. King James said, let us not be weary in doing good. He says, for in due season, we shall what? Receive our reward. Hallelujah. Hebrews 6 verse 10 says, for God is not unjust to forget your work and your labor of love, which you have shown towards his name in that you have ministered to the saints and still you minister. I prophesy to somebody tonight, for every reward, for every good deed you have done that you have not been rewarded, my God in whom I boast in will reward you tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For every good deed, for every sacrifice you have made on the, by, for the sake of the name of Jesus, hallelujah, that has not yet been rewarded. God knows the reward he's going to give you because he's a just God. I decree tonight that my God will reward you in the name of Jesus. And when you are rewarded, you will know that is by reason of tonight's vigil. Praise the name of the Lord. Look at what the Bible says. Talking about good deeds. Acts chapter 10. I love this passage. The Bible said that there was a man called Cornelius. And this man feared God. It says that, Acts 10 from verse 3. It says, about the, nine, the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of the Lord coming in, saying to him, Cornelius. And when he observed him, he was afraid. And said, what is it, Lord? So he said to him, your prayers and your arms have come up, what? For a memorial before God. Your good deeds have come up to God as a remembrance. And by reason of that remembrance, God has decided to act. Praise the name of the Lord. You see, one of the things about God remembering is that every time God remembered somebody in scripture, the Bible said that what? He backed it up with an action. Praise God. For every time God remembered somebody, whatever negative challenge they were going through was addressed instantly. Rachel was barren or her womb was closed. The Bible said 
God remembered her. That instant, her womb was open. Hannah was called barren. God remembered her. That instant, she conceived. God remembered Noah. That instant, the water began to recede. God remembered Joseph. That instant, the king sent for him. Hallelujah. So all I'm saying to you tonight is that as God is remembering you, speed for the fulfillment of God's promise concerning you is manifesting right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. How to provoke a remembrance. Number one is what? Good deeds. Number two, to provoke a remembrance is what? You must be a man or a woman of prayer. Praise God. This is why we have come to a vigil. You have come to receive understanding that you'll be given a time to practice what you have received. Second Kings 20 from verses 1. Look at what the Bible says. It says, about that time, Hezekiah became deathly ill. And the prophet, of, and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, went to visit him. He gave the king this message. This is what the Lord says. Set your affairs in order for you are going to die. You will not recover from this illness. When Hezekiah heard this, he turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. He says, remember, O Lord, how I have always been faithful to you, have served you single-mindedly, always doing what pleases you. Then he broke down and wept bitterly. But before Isaiah left the middle courtyard, this message came to him from the Lord. Go back to Hezekiah, the leader of my people. Tell him, this is what the Lord, the God of your ancestors, David says. I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. I will heal you. And three days from now, you will get out of the bed and go to the temple of the Lord. I will add 15 years to your life and I will rescue you and this city from the king of Assyria. I will defend this city for my own honor and for the sake of my servant, David. Hallelujah. If God is going to remember, if we're going to provoke a remembrance, we are going to what? Come to a time of prayer. You are saying, God, I may not be perfect but I have served you from a pure heart. I may not be perfect, but you know that I love you. On account of this, oh God, remember me tonight. Hallelujah. Finally, to provoke a remembrance, we must have a posture of joy and gratitude. Hallelujah. We must assume a posture of joy and gratitude. You see, they murmured, and they perished in the wilderness. They kept on going through the same cycle over and over again. When the devil brings you to a place of perpetual murmuring, you are going to be in perpetual hardship. Praise God. It says, Habakkuk 3, verse 17 to 19, it says, even though the fig trees have no blossoms, there are no grapes on the vines, even though the olive crop fails, and the fields lie empty and barren. Even though the flocks die, the fields and the cattle barns are empty. He says, yet. In other words, there's nothing looking in my life that I should thank God for. There is nothing to say, okay, fine. This is something the Lord has done that will warrant me to say, thank you, Jesus. He says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes me a, a, a sure-footed as a deer, able to tread upon heights. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Only God is able to do this. Hallelujah. But we must be a grateful people. Therefore, you are able, because in the time of prayer, we are going to be specific. You are telling God specifically, you are opening your mouth to say to God what you are thankful for. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And in conclusion, a quote says, the father is truly the only promise maker 
who is in earnest a promise keeper. A promise from God is what a promise kept. And tonight, I prophesy that God would remember you. And this is why our prophetic word for tonight is this. It says, so God heard the groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel and God acknowledged them. You see, so long as you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, Galatians chapter 3 from verses 26 tells us that for you all are sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ, it says what? Have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you all are one in Christ. And the verse 29, it says, For if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and a heir according to the promise. Therefore, every promise of God to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is your portion tonight in the name of Jesus. Every promise made to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, even to the lineage, David, because for Hezekiah, the Bible said that he would heal Hezekiah for the sake of David. And the Bible says in the book of Isaiah that I will give unto you the sure mercies of David. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And this brings us to our prayer point uh, tonight. This brings us to our prayer point uh, tonight. Praise God. It brings us to our prayer point uh, tonight. We are going to be praying tonight saying, number one, is that, Father, thank you for all you have done for me from this year began, from the time this year began. And you must be specific that, Lord, I thank you for my life. I thank you for my children. Particularly, I thank you for Jesse. Lord, for how you are perfecting all that concerns him. I thank you for my job. Lord, for how you are supplying all my needs. I thank you for the place of victory. Lord, how you are increasing us in number. Father, I thank you for my wife, for my children, for Tehillah, for Jedidiah. I thank you for my mother. I thank you for my siblings. Lord, for the things you have done for us this year as a family. Lord, the things that you have enabled us to accomplish Ordinarily, we could not have done it on our own strength. But Lord, in your mercy, you made it possible. I thank you for how you distinguish me in my place of work. For Lord, I thank you for your upholding hand that keeps supporting and lifting me higher and higher. Father, I thank you for every leader in the place of victory. I thank you for every worker. I thank you for every member. Father, I thank you for all that you are enabling us to accomplish the temple project. Father, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for healing. I thank you for healing, for testimonies of healing. I thank you, oh God. Father, we bless you. May go vale masuta vrade. Vonia ka seketela. Aviantos kotila. Avako seketaya. Arusha taleko ze. Pasiante le kozanda. Aviantos kotila makose. Veko telementos kotila. Father, I thank you for how you provide for us in the place of victory, for opening the windows of heaven unto us, O oh God, that you are supplying all our needs. Father, we are grateful. We are thankful, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God. We thank you for testimonies. Every Sunday, people are coming out to give testimonies. Lord, it is not by our wisdom or our might, but Lord, Lord, it is by your grace. Lord, I thank you for Johnny Messies. I go far and near. Lord, you bring me safely back. Lord, I thank you for times when my health was failing. Lord, you restored me. I thank you for my mother. I thank you for her health. I thank you for my siblings. I thank you for my in-laws. Thank you for deliverances from death. Thank you for averting the arrows of death. Oh, my 
our family, Lord, for the times when you delivered us from accidents, Lord, oh God in heaven, you remember this time five years ago, you saved me from death. How can I forget, oh God? You show me mercy, you show me mercy on a daily basis, oh God. You load me with mercy, you load me with compassion. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. I am grateful, oh God. I am grateful, oh God. I am grateful, oh God. Baba, I say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. No one can do what you do for us, oh God. Lord, if you were to be a man, how much can we pay? Lord, you would have charged us an arm and a leg. But Lord, you do all these things for free. Lord, without asking for anything. Lord, I just have to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. From January, you have kept us. Today is the 25th. Lord, we are here. It's not by our making. It's just by your mercy. It's just by your mercy. It's by your design. Oh, God, I thank you. 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 Father, I am grateful. Lord, I will not be anywhere without you, Jesus. You are the one that keeps doing it for me, oh, God. Lord, oh, God, I look at my weaknesses and I look at the result you accomplish. Lord, I know that it's not me. I know that it's not me. Lord, it is you and you alone, oh God. Lord, you are the one to keep doing it for us, oh God. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Father, I'm grateful. Father, I'm grateful. I'm grateful, oh God. I'm grateful. You keep doing marvelous things in our lives, oh God. I'm grateful. Father, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm thankful. Lord, you are awesome. Father, you are good. As a child, as as your child, I report, oh God, that you are a good father. You are a good father. Lord, I bless your name, oh God. I thank you, oh God, for times people will call me to pray for them. Lord, you back up my prayers. Lord, oh God in heaven, it's not me. Lord, I thank you. Father, I thank you. I bless you for strength. You strengthen me, oh God in heaven, in many ways that I cannot mention. Lord, I'm grateful. Father, I'm grateful. Let your name be glorified, oh God. May heaven never record of my ingratitude. Lord, I'm grateful. Lord, I'm grateful. I'm grateful, oh God, oh God, I'm grateful, I'm grateful. I'm grateful you supply all my needs. Even at the nick of time, when it seems like it's not going to happen, Lord, you just change events to my favor. I just want to bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. Jesus mighty name. Hallelujah. The next prayer point says, Father, in your mercy, look upon me and remember your covenant. The Bible said that by the children of Israel, the Bible said that, and he remembered the covenant he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Tonight we are praying and saying, Lord, in your mercy, in your mercy, in your mercy, oh God, look upon us, oh God, and remember your covenant. Remember your covenant, O oh God. Remember your covenant, O oh God. Remember your covenant, O oh God. Covenant of long life. Covenant of long life. Covenant of supernatural supply. Covenant of progress. Covenant of advancement. Covenant of victory. Covenant of perpetual victory. Victory on every side. Covenant of rest, covenant of rest. Oh Lord, oh God, look upon us with your mercy. And Lord, oh God, Lord, we pray. Remember your covenant in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The, of Jesus. the next prayer point says, Father, organize events that will lead to my remembrance. Organize events that will lead to my remembrance. If you remember the book of Genesis 41, the Bible said that indeed God had to organize the butler to remember that there was a boy in the prison. And that was how Joseph was remembered. Begin to pray and say, Father, organize events. The Bible says in the book of Esther, the king could not sleep 
Father, anyone that would need to not, anyone that needs to lose sleep, that I may be remembered. Father, in the name of Jesus, let the book of records be opened in my favor. Let the book of records be opened in my favor. The favor of my wife, in the favor of my family. Father, in the name of Jesus, organize events that will lead to my remembrance. In the name of Jesus, in the name name of Jesus. Father, I pray, oh God, that this is my desire in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The next prayer point say, Father, I receive grace to tarry to the end. The devil's aim is that we give up at the nick of time, at the edge of our reward. The devil causes us to give up. That is why Paul says, do not be weary in doing good, for God will surely he will surely remember. God will surely remember. Father, in the name of Jesus, we receive grace to tarry. The grace to tarry. The Bible said that indeed, though it may tarry, wait for it. Wait for it. Herobosheta vina barati. Father, in the name of Jesus, we receive grace, O oh God. We receive grace, O oh God, that your name be glorified in Jesus mighty name will have prayed. If you believe that God has heard your prayers tonight, just begin to offer him thanksgiving. Just begin to offer him thanksgiving. Begin to magnify his holy name. Begin to acknowledge his lordship. Begin to exalt him. Thank him for all that he's doing. Thank him for all that he has done. Thank him for what is yet to do. Father, we bless your name. Glory be to your holy name, O oh God. In Jesus mighty name will have prayed. Hallelujah. Tonight, the Bible says that as often as we take the communion, we are doing it in the remembrance of Jesus. And as tonight is our night of remembrance, we are taking the communion again. And I will encourage us to please get your elements ready. We want your bread, your water, your wine, whatever it may be. We would pray over it and it ceases to represent whatever it originally it was. The Bible said that when God had created everything, he called Adam and told him, whatever you name this thing is what it shall be. And so perhaps we are with biscuit. The moment we proclaim it as the body of the Lord, it ceases to be a biscuit and becomes a symbol of the body of Jesus. Therefore, just begin to gather your elements in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray over this communion elements. We are asking, O oh God, that Lord, you would bless them. Father, you will sanctify them. That Lord, from this hour, it ceases to be whatever they used to be, but now it becomes a representation of the body and the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll just read a portion of scripture and then we'll take our communion. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 6 from verses 54 to 58, it says, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. He says, and I will raise him up at the last day. Hallelujah. I will raise him up at the last day. He says, for my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He says, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. And as the living father has sent me and I live, Hallelujah. Because of the Father. So he who feeds on me will live because of me. Hallelujah. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, we break this bread that in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, we take this in the name of the Father, Son, of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The Bible said that when supper was ended, he took the cup, gave thanks, and said, this is the blood of my everlasting covenant, which is shed, on the blood, which is shed for you all. And it says, do this in remembrance of me. Hallelujah. Do this in remembrance of me. Praise the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we take this as the communion 
as the blood of Jesus, that as we take it, we receive the life of God. Perhaps there is sickness in your body. Tonight, as you take this communion, the Bible says that as the Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. That in the name of Jesus, you receive healing right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We take this cup in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you can pray the Holy Ghost, just begin to appropriate everything you are trusting the Lord for. Ma kovara dalibo sevra kadali marante evina matolia kazaya ive letus kataye bezunta lembre kedaya ina baroko zente liya mazoto. Father, we bless your name, O God. Father, we bless your name, O God. To you be all the glory, O God, in heaven, in Jesus mighty and matchless name we have prayed mm -hmm. father we just want to say thank you for ushering us into a new dimension of your grace and your mercy mm -hmm. that lord starting from today even into the month of december that lord oh god in heaven we will eat of the fatness of your house we will see your goodness in the land of the living in jesus mighty and matchless name we have prayed amen amen hallelujah